Good morning, folks. This is Todd Coburn from Cal Poly Pomona with Aero 4080, Finite Elements for Aerospace Majors. If you're in this class, you either really want to learn about structures or you're a glutton for punishment. Either way, I'm here to help you. This class is going to be a lot of work. Prior classes you found, especially like in statics, dynamics, strength one, uh, three, 20, two, three, two, six, one, those kind of classes, especially like statics had so many different topics. It was challenging to learn because you had so many things to learn. Even though we really only had a couple principles like equilibrium, summation of forces, free body diagrams, because those principles play out differently in different kinds of problems. It was very challenging and you need to do a lot of work in order to master the different ways that can be implemented. Dynamics also had a few more applications, but we kind of kept it simple with, uh, we didn't dive really deep into the more complicated parts of dynamics. And so that may have felt a little easier for you, even though many students find it even more challenging than statics. When you got to 3261, this class has been designed to be very practical. And so you may have found that most of the methods are not as difficult. However, there are so many different things you learned that it was probably challenging. Then you got to 3271, and we start diving deeper into some of those methods and going a little further with practical analysis techniques that you'll use a lot in industry if you do any kind of structures work. That was challenging, not so much because it's so difficult, because I think I put it together to make it simple and how to implement it. But once again, we had a lot of different things to learn and the truck class kept trucking forward, which makes it challenging for students to hang on to. In this class, Finite Elements, this is one of the more challenging classes that you can run into, as can be composites. Once again, I'm gonna keep it simple. But the, the problem, the challenge is that we're going to have a few different things we need to learn. The first thing is how, what is actually the basis of finite elements and how is that method used analytically? The best way to understand this part of the class is to actually learn to construct the stiffness matrices and to solve those in a practical fashion doing this by hand, even though that's not going to be done in industry, it can be used to go into higher learning where you're actually developing new methods. But most importantly, it helps you to understand the kinds of things that you do in fine elements and what the programs are going to be doing with the inputs that you make. And that will also help you understand the kinds of pitfalls you can run into. We're going to actually keep that simple. We're going to deal with some of the simplest methods and with one of the most straightforward applications of applying the stiffness method. So you can readily do that by hand. Now, while I say we're going to keep it simple, anytime you try and solve a set of simultaneous equations of more than just like two or three equations, it can be quite challenging. And so what I recommend and actually uh, practically insist on is that you get a good hand calculator. You can get them for less than $100 that will solve simultaneous equations. You probably should have done this earlier in the, uh, of your journey through aerospace, pro, the aerospace program. So a good program will, uh, calculator will solve simultaneous equations and other things. You can use that in composites. If you take that, you can use it for finite elements. So that once you've constructed an accurate stiffness matrix and figured out your boundary condition loads and such, you can then apply the method most straightforward because we're going to be doing this by hand to understand it. And that's one piece of the course. The other piece of the course is to learn to create meaningful finite element models. Now, many programs will make the error of jumping right into FEMAP and programs like that SolidWorks that will easily and readily create models with lots of lots of elements, lots of equations, makes really pretty color plots, and it's really easy to get complete nonsense out of that. Now, actually using FEMAP, SOLIDWORKS, some of those is useful, and it can actually make you more powerful and make your work more efficient, make it more efficient to develop models. But you need to learn the judgment of what kind of, pro uh, when you do the hand analysis, you're gonna learn what the program actually is crunching, when you learn to create the input decks, 
with what kind of elements. You need to learn about what kind of elements these programs are going to create and then how these elements are used and what the limitations and boundaries of what those elements are. So what we're going to do is first focus on Nastran. Nastran is the leader for aerospace structures, probably the leader for all fine element analysis, but it certainly is for aerospace structures. There are a lot of other programs being used. You start getting to more complicated analysis, you can get into Abacus and some others. ANSYS is used more in non-aerospace applications, and then you can get into lower end, cheaper software. Nastran is the leader. Now, to make a Nastran model, you can do that quicker by using pre and post processors like FEMAP, Patran, and some of these other things. We're gonna use FEMAP as our pre and post processor, but not until you first learn how to create a Nastran deck and get it to run effectively for simple problems. This will teach you, you're gonna find out you can do this with just a series of commands in a text file to create your model and run it. And then once you've mastered some of the basic elements, then we'll dive into learning how to use FEMAP to create our models more quickly, certain kinds of models. You're gonna find if, you, if I do a good job teaching you with the base trick Nastran skills, you're gonna find actually creating a directed deck used from Nastran is the quickest for the simplest kinds of problems. But when you have very much geometry, something like FEMAP or Patran can be much, much quicker. So we're going to learn that as well, and then by then you'll be armed and dangerous and able to get into and out of the input deck so you can, can have full control of the kind of model you create. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, so the way this class is going to run, homework is a critical element and it is required. However, because of the online content and some other things, there's some challenging challenges with correct, collecting and giving you meaningful credit for that work. So I'm actually not gonna collect or score your homework this semester, okay? What this means is uh, you're gonna need the discipline to do it anyway, because if you don't do that homework, you won't, you won't learn anything, okay? All right, so you're gonna do this homework, and what that will do is prepare you for the weekly quizzes and the uh, exams are gonna happen every couple weeks, okay? All right, so that's one element. The hand analysis is mostly gonna focus on solving the matrices. The other element is the projects. With the projects, we're gonna start creating Nastran models that, that represent meaningful structures from the first day. And by keeping those simple of an increasing complexity, you're gonna learn how to model. And then we're gonna learn how to do FEMAP models. Now, to do that, uh, in order to keep you all on the same page and to help you develop good documentation skills, I'm gonna provide a template for your projects. So you're gonna, when you run your model, you're gonna put your input and output and results in this template. When you're done with that, if you do a good job, if you can resist the urge to try and copy from somebody, you will learn meaningful documentation skills that will take you a long way and make you a leader in industry in this field. And it will also be easier for you to evaluate and debug your models. And it'll be quite impressive if you bring any of these reports to your uh, would-be employers when you go on an interview later, especially if it's for structures, okay? So uh, there are a couple things that are, are uh, new with the online environment with some of the programs have changed and some other things. So we may hit a couple glitches along the way and I'll do my best to stay in front of you and to make this as easy for you as possible while still giving you meaningful mm, problems and opportunities to learn. I'll do my best, I expect you to do your best in mastering this material. It's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a fun journey. If you wanna master structures, this is a good elective course for you. If you don't wanna do a lot of work, if you feel like you shouldn't have to work that much for a three unit class, drop the class, takes another class. There are other classes that are easier, that have benefits somewhere probably. This class is for folks that are serious about structures and willing to work their fanny off in order to master it. If you're willing to do that, I'm willing to try and help. Good luck. See you soon. Hasta luego.